Thank you for joining EdPlace Live Lessons from your homes. I'm Miss Fagum and you've joined us for a Year 7 Science lesson today. You may have heard of EdPlace or maybe you use EdPlace regularly, but just in case you haven't, here's a summary. We're an online digital learning platform written for students in Year 1 up to Year 11, offering English, Maths, Science and 11 plus self-marked activities written by fully qualified teachers. We're bringing live English, Maths and Science lessons into your homes during the school closure period. So why not join us over the next few weeks as we tackle some key topics? You might find it useful to have a pen and paper handy as we go so that you can make a note of key ideas or jot things down. You'll also need to access your EdPlace account. If you don't have an EdPlace account, do not worry. You can access all of our activities if you go to edplace.com. We'll go over this in more detail when we get to that part. So welcome to today's Year 7 Science lesson on Solute, Solvent and Solution with me, Miss Fagum. By the end of today's lesson, we're aiming to have achieved one or all of the following three steps. Define the terms Solute, Solvent and Solution. Distinguish between these terms and explain what a solution is using these terms. It's important to make sure we understand what a mixture is. A mixture is something that has two or more substances mixed together and that are not chemically joined or held together by bonds. An example would be your breakfast bowl of cereal and milk. Let's take a look at the word dissolve and what it means. When a solid completely breaks up and mixes in with another substance, often a liquid, we say it has dissolved. For example, if you were to mix sugar with water, you would find that the sugar looks like it has disappeared. We would then say the sugar has dissolved. Another word for dissolve is soluble. So sugar is soluble in water. Some substances like sand don't dissolve in water. We would say sand is insoluble in water. So what's a solute? A solute is the substance that is being dissolved. So if you add sugar to water, the sugar would be the solute. Whereas a solvent is a substance that is doing the dissolving. So in this case, that would be the water. You'd often find that solvents are liquids and solutes are solids. Adding a solute to a solvent gives you a solution. When you add sugar to water, you'd get a solution of sugary water. Adding salt to water would give you a solution of salty water. It's easier to remember it as an equation. Solute plus solvent gives you a solution. To help you remember these terms and their definitions, think of these three words, being, doing and formed. Solutes are the substances being dissolved, whereas solvents are doing the dissolving. Solutions are formed. In a moment, I'm going to direct you to an activity that you can use to put into practice what we've just learnt. Please sign into your EdPlace account or go to www.edplace.com. On the next slide, I will show you how to access this activity. The activity we are looking for is called Solutions. Whether you have an EdPlace account or not, we follow a similar path to find it. If you have an account, go straight to Science. If you don't have an account, go to the Learn tab on the site and select Science. After this, the route is the same. Go to Year 7, select the Curriculum tab and go to Chemistry, Pure and Impure Substances. Find the group of activities under Mixtures, including Dissolving. Take a look through and select the activity Solutions. You can click on this to start. If you're struggling to find this activity, please visit our support site on screen for a quick walkthrough on how to locate activities. Just to make sure that we are all at the same place, this is the introduction that you should be able to see. If you can't see this introduction, please go back to the activities and check to see you've selected the right one according to the last slide. If you can see this introduction, you're ready to start. As soon as you're ready, please pause my lesson and start the activity. I will go through three of the questions in the next stage of my lesson, so don't worry if you get stuck. Let's take a look at some of the questions that you've just completed. 
Question three asks, what happens to the solid particle when a solid substance dissolves in a liquid? Here you have to choose one correct answer. We know from our lesson that when a solid dissolves, it breaks up completely and mixes in with the solvent. Here, it's a liquid. We also know that when a solid dissolves, that crystals are not formed. We also know that they are not held tightly in a fixed arrangement. So the correct answer would be, they are separated when the liquid is added as they mix with the liquid particles. Well done if you got that correct. Let's take a look at question four. This question is a little different from the last one because here you're expected to complete the sentence. The question reads, a solid dissolves in a liquid. They form a, here is where you would type your answer in the box below. If you remember from our lesson, we referred to the solid as a solute and the liquid as a solvent. If you also remember the equation, solute plus solvent gives you a solution. So your answer would be solution. Great job. Let's take a look at question nine. This question shows you a beaker containing oil, water and sand. Here you have to choose two correct statements about the contents of this beaker. If you notice, there are three separate layers. The top layer being oil, the middle layer being water and the bottom layer being sand. Because they are three distinct layers, that tells you then that these substances do not mix. If you remember from our lesson, we said that sand does not dissolve in water and that it is insoluble. So your correct answers would be, oil and water do not mix, they are insoluble in each other and sand does not dissolve in water. Excellent. Well done if you got these correct. Let's recap what we set out to do today. How did you get on? Can you define the term solute, solvent and solution? Can you distinguish between these terms? And can you explain what a solution is using these terms? If you have met one or all of these, that is excellent work. You have achieved our objectives for today. We know that some of you will feel you need a little more practice to really master these skills, while others of you are ready for your next challenge. To help you know which activity to select next, here are some suggestions. The activity we just tried is listed as activity two. If it felt a little tricky for you, why not try activity one? To gain confidence in the skills you need, then give it another go to see if you are ready to tackle it this time. If you feel you need a challenge, why not try activities three, four or five? Have a go and good luck. As we finish up for today, here are some other places you can find us or access support. For more tips and ideas, why not check out www.edplace.com or you could follow us on Twitter at edplace underscore UK or join our Facebook group, Edplace Home Learning Community. We look forward to working with you again soon and keep practicing in the meantime.